Welcome to Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church for worship recorded for September 13th. We pray that you will find God's presence as you worship with us this fine day. This is the worship recorded for September 13th, the 15th Sunday of Pentecost. Whenever you worship with us, may God bless you and enrich your lives with faith and hope and the gift of forgiveness. I am Reverend Bruce Jones. I am the interim pastor here at Greenfield Avenue, and we welcome you to worship. Now listen and let God's spirit touch your hearts as we listen to the gathering music from Felix Mendelssohn by our music minister, Sherry Mazakowski. Come, bless the Lord with me. 
the compassionate and merciful Lord invites us to be filled with endless love. Let all that is within us, body, emotions, mind, and will, praise God's holy name. Come, come praise the eternal God. God forgives despite our failures and releases us to live faithfully. We will praise the Lord, never forgetting the good and gracious act of love God has done for us. In worship, bless the Lord, my soul. Let us not forget the benefits of God's grace and forgiveness. We worship with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We worship God's holy name. The first hymn today is hymn number 620, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. begin with our praise of the Lord, we then acknowledge our need for God's compassion, grace, and forgiveness. We examine our hearts and seek to get right with God and our neighbor. Join me in our corporate prayer of confession as we pray together. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you our forgetfulness and acknowledge our waywardness. We accept our responsibility to live by faith and not on our own strength and understanding. We ask the Lord to heal and redeem us from lack of commitment to truth and justice, a time of reflection and examination. Lord, satisfy the real thirst of our soul. As far as the rising sun is from the setting sun, remove our sin from us Help us to change our way of life so that we may live faithfully. Reveal yourself to us again as a God of grace, rich in mercy and patient with our wandering. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and has not dealt with us according to our sins. Instead, God forgives us. This gift of forgiveness makes us able with the power of the Holy Spirit 
to choose to forgive each other. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Forgiveness is mercy, kindness, and unfailing love, which brings eternal peace. May you know that this kind of peace, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Our God is full of mercy and grace. We are called to share this love in Christ's name. Jesus calls us to come alongside to support and encourage others with a hand of love and peace. We approach God's holy word seeking the Holy Spirit to shed light on our path that we may see and understand God's word to us this day. Join me in a spirit of prayer. Awesome and majestic God, your creative power, your glory and holiness bring light and understanding to us, your people. You equip us for our faith journey throughout the stages of life through the gift of the Holy Spirit. May this time of worship and the service of our lives reveal our thanksgiving and our wonder that you should so care for us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture today comes to us from the book of Matthew 18, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, the choice of forgiveness. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him that debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave, slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave? as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Lord, for mercy, tender mercy, pour out your mercy and your love on us. Show your face, Lord. Show your face. Your 
tender mercy. Pour out your mercy and love on us. Bend your ear, O Lord. Bend your ear. the school year is underway let's have a little math lesson because i know my sons don't like to do math during the summertime and i'll tell you we'll also do a little bit of greek study as well and greek math is new math depending on how well you understand greek and how well you understand math in the revised standard version 77 times where other translations put the greek word order a little differently and that's where we get in other translation that it's 70 times seven same words different order so when jesus responds to peter's question lord if another member of the church sins against me how often should i forgive as many as seven times well again part of the lesson is that seven is a complete number it signifies a spiritual perfection so when Jesus says 77 times, it's perfection times perfection or perfect, eternal, continual forgiveness. Are you up to that challenge? Other translations, as I said, change the word order so we get 70 times seven, which is 490 if you do regular math. So if the Lord, if another member sins against me, we say 490 times. So can you imagine someone committing the same sin 490 times against you of 490 times? So it's complete and continual forgiveness. So the image Jesus wants us to understand is that we are to be people of forgiveness as God has continually forgiven us for our failures. We are to be gracious and to forgive one another just as we have been forgiven. Oh yeah, there's a prayer we say to forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. We are to forgive those who hurt us, who step on our toes unintentionally, who have damaged our relationship 
and made it a little bit difficult to work with them. Christians continue the cycle of grace by forgiving friends, even strangers. And the real challenge is to forgive our enemies, those who have hurt us the most. It is a constant task. And as long as we live in this world, we need to be in the business of forgiveness. That's one of my ministry mantras. We are in the business of forgiveness. We should be regularly forgiving people who do things not quite the way we thought they should be done. Yet some sinful situations and emotional injury seem to be easier to forgive than others. Certain friends or family members or strangers or co-workers, it may take a little longer and to a little more work to forgive because we might consider them more of an enemy or a frenemy. It might be easier to forgive that stranger who we really don't know their story than someone we know very well. So Jesus tells a parable where one slave who owes a larger sum to the king and has their debt forgiven. We should assume that this is a big sin, like a felony criminal conviction, a life of sinfulness that has been forgiven by God. Lynn and Dan Wagner forgave Lisa, the drunk driver who plowed into them one night, sent them to the hospital and killed their two daughters. It's a big deal. It was not easy, but they forgave her. Seven years after the accident, they met and Lisa received a hug from Lynn. Lisa is now like a daughter to Lynn and Dan, and they tell the amazing story of how God has allowed them to forgive and to move on in life. Not to forget, not to forget their daughters, but to give forgiveness as a choice of God's amazing power and love for us that we can share with others. Forgiveness that comes from a big heart of grace. Lisa, Lynn, and Dan have been transformed by forgiveness. Unfortunately, not everyone finds that same freedom, the freedom of peace in Christ Jesus. The slave in this parable who received forgiveness turns around and demands satisfaction from his fellow slave who owed him far less, a minor misdemeanor, a casual misstep, an unintentional offense. The forgiven slave is not forgiving. He holds a grudge. He seeks his pound of flesh and serves as a prosecuting attorney and judge on his fellow person. Unforgiveness remains around, and it's a poison that destroys relationships, impacts our health, and makes some people miserable and filled with bitterness. In general, this is not where Christians should live. But I know families torn by ridiculous gr grudges over who used the same name for their first grandchild, the sisters who rarely speak to each other and glare at each other at family gatherings because they can't get over it. This is the community where we need to witness. Like those in the parable who witnessed the unforgiving slave and went and reported this unchristlike behavior to the king, the king whom we realize is God, does not look kindly on those who receive forgiveness but refuse to offer forgiveness to their friends, to their neighbors. The one who refuses forgiveness to others disturbs the community, disturbs our own relationship with the Lord. I will say, Forgiveness is risky business. At times, forgiveness is challenging. Usually, forgiveness means making a difficult choice to love another person as God has loved us. Forgiveness is not forgetting. We still hold and know and protect ourselves from being injured by a person 
but we still treat that person with human dignity, with grace, with love, with compassion. It is treating the other person as if the sin has not been committed. Forgiveness is a calculated risk. Treating others with God's love and grace, even when it hurts, we remember and move on. We forgive our brothers and sisters in our heart and let God pay that debt of pain. Anger and bitterness will destroy us. Forgiveness releases us to live in peace. So you do the math. Is it really worth holding on to a grudge, withholding God's grace, being unforgiving to disrupt our relationship with Jesus, with our community? Is it really worth the challenge to forgive, to give hope, to live a Christ-like being, to be in the business of forgiveness? Forgiveness, I think it adds up if you do your math. To God be the glory. Amen. community of faith, as we remember those who are in our hearts and minds, those who are listed and those who we just remember and ponder in our hearts. Let us pray. Awesome and majestic God, we come before you because you are the God of power, a creative power of grace, and we come because you are holy and you offer us forgiveness and you ask us to live in that freedom of forgiveness, to be equipped for the journey of faith, that we may be in the business of forgiveness, and that we will share through the gift of your Holy Spirit the challenge of forgiving those in our community. There are so many places in our world where that forgiveness is needed. We especially lift up places in 
our country where there is unrest, for Kenosha, for Portland, for places like Rochester, where there is unrest, where there are protests and where there are riots. We ask for your spirit to bring us peace, to bring reconciliation. We may be able to forgive those who have injured us emotionally and physically. We also lift up those who are ill at ease, who have issues of health. And for Pam Lentz's friend Nancy, who is battling cancer, for all those who are battling cancer of all kinds, those who recover, those who live with the illness, and those who will eventually die because it is incurable. We pray for Dwayne Edwards, Gail Close's brother, who's home from the hospital as he continues to recover. For Sue Pope's friend Carl, who had a medical procedure a couple of weeks ago. We pray for Donna Holmes with her retirement from the position. And with joy, we welcome Sherry as our temporary administrative assistant. We pray for those who are dealing with wildfires and the storms in the south and the challenges with COVID-19 for our students in school and our teachers. And Lord, we celebrate with Jim and Judy Dixon at their 50th wedding anniversary this Saturday. May the joy of their love and their time together warm all our hearts as we open our eyes with hope to see where you are guiding us we spend each day consumed with our daily tasks, remind us that you are there and that we are to honor you by serving our community and your children everywhere. We offer you our hearts, our hands, and our minds as we pray with one voice, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Faithful stewardship begins with gratitude. We are grateful for what God has already given to us. We give to support the work and worship of Christ in our community. We invite you to be steward as support of the ministry of Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church. We offer our gifts with gratitude and hope that the Lord will use them to unite Christians with grace and peace. Let us dedicate this week's gifts with prayer. May the gifts we offer, loving God, serve as a witness to our love for your word. As stewards, we offer these gifts to restore relationships and friendships with peace and honor. We gratefully offer these gifts to welcome strangers into the community of faith and glory, God's presence each day. We pray in Jesus' name, who guides us in faithfulness. Amen. The last hymn today will be hymn number 837, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Walk in the 
Go out into the world. Go in the Lord's peace because you are forgiven. And be about the business of forgiveness that God calls all Christians to. To forgive does not mean to forget, but to forgive means to allow God to work in that person's life, to restore your relationship with them, that you may be Christ-like to them. Lean on the everlasting arms of God and bring peace to the world, one person at a time. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen.